This is a Geek Leader Podcast, and I'm your host, John Rauta. This show is all about helping us grow as leaders, become better technologists, and improve our lives both at work and at home. I hope you enjoy the show and learn a lot. Hello, world, and welcome to a Geek Leader Podcast. I'm your host, John Rauta. Today's sponsor is A2 Hosting. I've been using A2 Hosting solid state hosting solutions for our website at geekleader.com for many, many years now and absolutely love their support, their service, and all the features that you get. You get access to cPanel. You get all of the things that you can imagine for a great WordPress experience, including their A2 optimized WordPress, which does extra security checks, extra lockdown. It, you can lock down your editor uh, file so you can't edit anything inside there. You get alerts whenever there are file changes that are done. Um, you can also do automatic updates, backups, and more with A2 hosting. So highly recommend it. Go to a geekleader.com slash A2 to get more information and to sign up for their solid state turbocharged speed hosting today. Again, that's a geekleader.com slash A2. All right, geek leaders. Today on the show, I'm honored to have Katie Burkhart with us. She is the mastermind behind Matter Logic, Matter Logic and uh, she is a jargon slayer, which I love that term. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit about storytelling today and some other things. She's also a serial entrepreneur, including uh, some of the things like Matter Matter Seven, Matter Pulse, and some things that you may have heard of, and some things you may not have heard of. But it's all it's all good. We're going to be talking talking about it today, talking about how we can use uh improve our communication as leaders because a lot of us in the technology space we struggle sometimes with being a good communicator me included and that's one of the reasons why i do this podcast so i can improve my communication skills so uh hopefully she'll help us with that and with all that being said katie welcome to the show thank you so much for having me uh, i'm really looking forward to this conversation uh, i was already enjoying getting to know <laughs> you so i'm excited to see where this goes so um before we get started, can you tell the audience a little bit about your background and kind of how you got to where you are today? And um, and one more question that I want to throw in there, because I, I saw it in your bio, and I thought it was really interesting that you're a registered Jedi. So I want to know how one becomes a registered Jedi. Absolutely. Um, so my story uh, goes all the way back to, you know, my first job uh, where I was a lifeguard uh, at my local pool, grew up there, swam there as a kid, looked forward to being, you know, the cool lifeguard with the sunglasses and the car keys because, you know, to an eight year old, that's the definition of cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I found working in that job was that I, my takeaway was not, you know, show up on time, learn to be responsible. The, the, I was thankfully pretty good at that before. Um, what I learned was I did not want to spend my life in a situation where I was basically watching the clock kick, tick down the time, very acutely aware that I would not get that time back. Um, so I took that lesson with me into my work, I invested into things that I was both good at, I wanted to master, and that I felt was useful um, going out into the world from theater to design, uh, to storytelling, to writing literature, um, sort of span the gamut. Um, and then early in my career, sort of flash forward, I, I was working with someone who was just the quintessential micromanager. Uh, and I was still doing my best work as I, you know, as I could, I really cared about, you know, what I was doing, I wanted it to go well. And I just reached a point where, you know, she had pushed me over the edge was, you know, giving me a verbal thrashing in front of all the other people working on the project. And, and I lost it. And I told her to go to hell. <laughs> uh, and I sort of took a step back. And I was like, Ooh, I'm not sure that that's the person that I want to be. I wrote an apology letter, like that's not you know, people think that's really cool. It's really not. Um, and I ended up saying, you know, what did I learn from this? And what I learned was that, you know, I didn't under. it wasn't that she might have been looking at things differently or that she as the leader had perspective. I didn't. It's that she was not communicating to me the reason behind what she was asking me to do. It simply didn't make any sense. Um, and mm -hmm. that was frustrating to me who did have a really good reason and logic behind what I was doing and why I was doing it in order, you know, for the betterment of the project, not really for the, the betterment of myself. Um, so I ended up taking a step back from that uh, and doubled down on um, other things that I was doing, particularly helping nonprofits to tell their story better. Um, what I had found, you know, in, in sort of my journey was that there was a gap there um, mm -hmm. and that it just wasn't done well, people, you know, finding people who were, were willing to do it, not as a pro bono project, uh, but as a, I'm really digging into this, I'm really excited about it, became difficult. Uh, and a lot of that came down to how are they going to do it cost effectively, uh, depending on the size of the, the nonprofit. Um, 
And, and the good news is I found a way to do it. Uh, and the, the company that remains today is Matter7 doing what it has always done, which is to evolve their strategic story um, and really get them on the same page. But what I learned through that was, hey, getting them on the same page is one hurdle. Keeping them on that page is a whole extra thing. Um, and that's what led me off to create uh, the company Matter Pulse, um, but really to create where I spend most of my time today, which is in helping people to learn about and use Matter Logic, uh, which is a way to think about business um, and a way to run your business that is absolutely rooted in story um, with a real consideration given to the language we use and the jargon we don't um, to help people to be better, lead better business leaders uh, and to, to run a high impact team. So what's the problem with jargon? So a lot of us IT folks, we, we talk in acronyms and we use a lot of tech, you know, jargon, you know, we'll, we'll say things, you know, all the time, like zero trust, you know, cloud security and throw out a whole bunch of buzzwords that, you know, makes us sound smart and feel smart. But um, what's the problem with that? So jargon is, you know, a, a small symptom of a larger issue, but I'll, I'll come back to that. The, the biggest problem with it is it's a barrier to understanding um, your, your position and your understanding of the word, you know what it means, but the person you're talking to may not. Um, and in a lot of cases, doesn't have any idea what word you just used. So what you ended up doing was putting a whole bunch of letters in front of them um, in, in some form of sentence that meant very little. Um, one of the best ways to communicate with people is actually story. Um, because we're human and we understand stories, we make meaning through stories. Um, if you can give us a visual, you know, to illustrate what it is that you have to say, the not only understanding, but retention is always going to be stronger. Um, the way that I like to look at jargon is the way that I like to look at um, things like acronyms. You know, if you couldn't tell it to your kid and have them reasonably understand what you just said, you're still doing it wrong. Um, and that's a hard thing because we don't think about it. Once we've adapted it into our lexicon, we know what it means and we're good. Um, but it's something that, you know, proactively saying my goal, you know, going back to the larger issue is that it's not about me, it's about them. Um, and really looking at the fact that the person you're trying to communicate to um, really seeing you know, the point of the conversation of how do I help them to understand as opposed to how smart can I make myself look? Yeah, I think that's, I think it's into the ego part because we kind of, I don't know, I, I know I struggle with ego from time to time where I feel like I, I know more than the person in the room and, it, you know, maybe it's an insecurity. I feel like I have to use those terms so that they understand that I know those things. And, um, uh, and what I found is that that's just, who cares what I know? As long as we're getting the job done and we're all, you know, moving the ball forward and working as a team, you know, why does it matter that, that I know these acronyms that no one else knows about, you know? Absolutely. And it's a layer, you know, there will be a moment where somebody asks you a really difficult technical question and you need to be able to do both because you do have to be able to do your job. And, you know, I always appreciate um, people who understand what's going on. Or when I get a question, I'm like, I, you know, I don't know what the heck this means. And I call the appropriate person and say, can you sort this out? And they can, but the, the end of the day, what I'm looking for is, the value, you know, and this gets into this, this larger challenge of story. You know, so many of us look at story as that thing we do to market that ultimately gets us to sales versus thinking as leaders about what's the story that I tell about my company? How do I understand our role and what it is that we're doing here. And you so brilliantly captured, you know, does it really matter how smart I am as long as we're getting the job done? And the, the answer is not so much. Um, what your, your people are really looking for, whoever you serve, um, are, is for you to deliver the value that they need and help them to, um, achieve what it is that they're looking to achieve. You know, that may be a personal transformation. They want to be seen as, you know, a change maker, for example, or, you know, they're looking for a more effective way to do X, Y, and Z um, so that they can do their job better. Um, but really tapping into that value you deliver, really understanding your purpose changes the whole focus um, of your company and, and ultimately changes how you think about your work and how you do your work. 
Yeah. And, you know, in talking about that, you mentioned purpose and that word purpose is kind of important to me. I can, I can think back to the first time that I really used a story um, to, to show purpose and an explanation. I just finished reading uh, Dan Pink's book um, uh, about motivation. And, and he talked about the autonomy, mastery, and purpose were kind of the three things to help motivate people. And I was a new manager, new leader, and I was trying to figure out how I can motivate my team. And we were building like this web application and the, story that user the user story that came in was that they wanted to move a button that was at the um bottom of the page on this app up to the top of the page i'm like oh this is stupid you know <laughs> what's the point of this request so i did a little digging and i asked around and kind of asked you know why, why are we doing this and i said oh because the way the actual technicians use this app is different than the way you guys designed them to use it you design them to open it up look at their tickets make their notes and hit save and close at the end but what they really do is they put their notes in there, they save it, but they don't close it. And they wait to the end of the day and then they open up all 10 of those requests and they scroll down and hit close, close, close on each one of them right before they leave to go home. So then that, you know, dawned on me, well, first, it's not just moving the button. We should actually make a mass close so they could all just close at once and get, get done with it. But the way I can use this to my team is to talk about like, what do the people do when they leave? So I told a story about how like one of our technicians works really hard all day. At the end of the day, he gets ready to go home. But before he can go home, he has to spend a good 10 minutes scrolling through these tickets and closing them all one at a time. You know, if we could put a way for them to mass close all the tickets, he could leave and have 10 minutes more to spend time playing soccer with his daughter, you know, or are taking his significant other out for dinner or whatever it is that this technician's doing. We can give that person that much time back in their day. And if you multiply that over the 150 techs that work for our company right now that are using this app, that's real time and real value that they can spend with their families, you know, and telling a little story like that just – you know, made a bigger impact and made it something that the team wanted to do, not just an annoying button move that we had to do. Exactly. Um, and you've done, you know, what, what we're all about at Matter Logic, which is to work backwards, you know, mm. start with the point and actually work backwards to develop what it is that you're doing. And you were able to capture that because you got a request and you said, let me unpack this. Let me understand why this is being asked to be done. Because if I really understand the reason, then I can give my team autonomy to take the reason and come up with a better solution, which you did. It wasn't just about moving the button. Oh my goodness, we could actually come up with a master button, which is really delivering the value that it is that they need. Um, but that's a huge Hugely different way of working for a lot of people who either never ask the question in your case, or um, for a lot of tech companies who are so excited about all the things that they could do, you know, all the new technology they could take advantage of, that they start with, you know, blockchain's the latest and greatest. We should be doing mm -hmm. something with blockchain. And they're almost trying to wedge or justify the thing, the tactic into a box instead of saying, What's the point of this? You know, what's the point that we're trying to achieve? What's the value we're trying to deliver? Who does it go to? And then work backwards to say, is blockchain actually the right tactic to do what it is that we need to do? Um, podcasting is another one that I look at where we've got a lot of people starting podcasts because they feel like they should start a podcast versus saying, here's what I want to achieve. This is the point is podcasting the best way to go about doing it? Um, and starting to tell the story that way can be hugely beneficial. The other thing you did that I, I think is really fantastic is you told an impact story. There are four types, um, but the, the first and most important are people served stories. How are you sharing on a regular basis um, throughout your business why what you do matters, you know, impact stories, the acronym is IS, because what they do is they ground your impact in what is, you know, this is what's actually happening. This is what they need in the case of your example, or here's the thing that we help them do. And here's why it matters. Cool. You know, now I have a lot of motivation or more motivation and more importantly, a better understanding of the page on which we exist um, to go about doing my work. And, and Anna, Adam Grant has done research to prove out that it's, it's actually ultimately more effective as well. So, yeah, it's definitely more effective. I've seen it just, you know, I don't have any like data to, to back it up, but just it seems more effective with my team whenever we 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 do that we we to take the what we the outcome that we want and kind of work backwards to how we do that and also i found that you know 
instead of telling someone how to do something or what to do in, in a way of more commanding, but give them the output and let them use their creative minds to come up with their own solution. One, they're more happier, or that's, that's not right English, right? They're, they're happier doing it, but, <laughs> but but also they seem to come up with solutions that I never would have thought of that are just way better, you know, um, than what my brain could come up with. Exactly. And this is where you're starting to see an evolution in work. And I think there are some companies, it sounds like yours is one of them, that has adapted to this more naturally than others. But for people who are becoming new leaders, maybe you came up in kind of the traditional corporate world. Um, you know, we're seeing a real shift uh, to get back to your question about being a, re uh, a registered Jedi. Um, <laughs> you know, for a long time, we ran things like the empire, you know, it was about us. We brought in minions to do what we told them. We micromanaged them to do it all the same way. And, and it didn't really matter what happened to them or whether or not they cared or whether we gave them a good reason, you know, this is just what happened versus mm -hmm. the rebel Alliance, which even in the name, you have to choose to be there. Um, and one of the things that we don't always think about as leaders, when we come in, you know, or start as a new leader or rise up as a leader is the team that we're leading does not have to be there. They choose to be there. They can always go find another job. Um, so really looking at how can we make this a place that they want to be? And the first place that starts is giving them a really clear understanding of the point of why we're all here and making sure that that point really matters. Um, but then extending from that, uh, once you know that you have, you know, I understand why we're here and why it matters. I understand where we're going uh, in the vision that we've put forth. I've got my unique capabilities. I know the mission I'm here to execute. I've put up these bumper cards by way of my values. You've given them a lot of space to actually be able to sit down in a large scale setting, thinking about your strategy, strategic plan, or breaking that down into, I understand the key result that I need to deliver. And I understand how that fits within our unique capabilities and helps us fulfill our purpose. Now you've given me space as an individual to exercise my purpose and my unique excellence and come up with ideas that hit that target, um, which is a really, um, it's a different way of working, I think, for a lot of people right now. Um, and shifting that story, shifting that focus is a really big piece of enabling you to do it and do it effectively across your company. Yeah, no, I think that's really good. Uh, I like the way you talked about the bumpers because my my mind immediately went visually to bumper bowling. <laughs> you know, yes. we put the bumpers in there and, you know, the, the idea of those guardrails you're talking about, the bumpers aren't to crash you. You know, they're there to keep you're knock down, help you knock down as many pins as possible, right? To help yes. you be be successful. And you know, when you when you said that, you know, that triggered a visual acuity of, of what that means. Yes, um, and I think the the piece of finding that space as a leader to understand your role, you know, in helping to provide that that here's why we're here, here's where we need to go, here's what makes us unique, and you know, here's a shared understanding of how we get there so we're all using the right lens, the right story to understand our work um, is a really big piece now of what uh, leadership is about. Personally, I think that's been a big piece of what leadership has always been about, um, but the biggest change is making that from a well, we did this exercise and we put them on the poster and the posters in the break room, we're done to how is that actually changing how you do work every single day um, and being able to move that through line. Um, and mm -hmm. I personally think story is the best way to do it. Really understanding every word you're choosing, eliminating the jargon wherever you can um, is the best way to make sure that that's going all the way down, up, down from hey, this is why we exist to, hey, this is why we're having this meeting. Um, because the the other piece of this, uh, which I think is also a newer trend uh, in leadership is if it doesn't have a good point, we should say no, uh, because people aren't looking to invest their time into aimless tasks. If it doesn't, if it's not a good use of your team time, team's time, if it's not going to deliver value to the people you serve and help you achieve those outcomes, don't do it. Uh, yeah. and put the time into doing the work you need to do as well as you possibly can. So how can one get better at, at using story to, to help communicate? And, and especially, let's say, you know, you're a middle manager in technology, maybe you're a software development team lead, maybe you're an IT engineering lead or cybersecurity, you know, manager. 
or, or maybe just an individual contributor and you want to be better at um at communicating in your meetings and things like that how can we how can we start where, where do we start at, at this so there's the structural end let's look at meetings um because there's something that absolutely everybody universally complains about they have way too many they're poorly run, they're mostly a waste of time. Um, so understanding first and foremost that most of the time in a meeting happens before you get on the call uh, and making sure that you have a really clear meeting plan for how am I going to spend the time? And one of the keys there is start with the point of the meeting so that people understand what we need to achieve by the time we get off this call. Um, and then in verbs, you know, make sure that it's clear what we're going to do, like what decide this, not talk about the upcoming mm -hmm. staff retreat, decide what's happening with the upcoming staff retreat. So there's no lack of clarity that we're going to walk away with the decision on X at the end of this call. Um, and really thinking in advance about how are you then going to effectively communicate that information if you're not a natural storyteller, someone who just communicates that way. And, and you know, as much as Everyone loves to put storyteller in their byline on LinkedIn. I will venture to guess that the vast majority of us had to actually take time to learn how to do that. Um, but by preparing, it gives you space to think about what those stories are. If you're looking for things like, I want to tell a story about how we helped you know, this customer achieve what it is we're here to do because I want to illustrate my point, building structures into your company to make sure that you're collecting those and that you know where to get them is a big help so that you don't have to make one up, um, mm -hmm. which is difficult <laughs> uh, depending on who you are and, and makes it hard to do at scale. The same goes for team stories. If you're going to recognize a person, you know, don't just say John's great. Take the time to tell John's story. Who is John? Why is John great? What did John do? How did it contribute to why we're all here? How is he part of that story? Um, because that's, that's a big difference um, in their understanding of their contribution um, and, and their role and what it is that you're doing. Uh, but those are also things that you can put structure in place to start to collect, to start to see come in, um, which helps to, you know, the ideation phase um, in a lot of cases is sometimes the hardest. After that, looking at, you know, storytelling skills, how do you do it? One of the, the tips I always give is, um, which is a, a pretty standard uh, storytelling or writing trope is um, show, don't tell, you know, mm. always think about how you can illustrate what it is you're trying. And I don't mean draw a picture. I mean, paint me a picture. Talk to me about, you know, uh, your, your left molar has, you know, C12, you know, cavity rot and your gum has moved to 24 millimeters is really pretty awful. I don't understand what that means. But if you said to me, you know, your, your molars are getting chewed through, you know, the way a termite chewed through my barn last summer, and we really needed to replace it. Let's talk about that root canal. I can start to put those pieces together because I understand more or less what termites chewing through a barn looks like, or at least can put my hands more easily around the fact that it's not good. And we have a problem, <laughs> which is the yeah. point of what you're trying to get across. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, when you when you say that versus the jargon that you were using to begin with, you, you paint more of a picture that becomes it, it invokes emotion. Yes. Yes, it does. Um, and in, invokes a. Um, <laughs> it, it, it also helps you to retain you know, which uh, yes. is something we don't think about like, oh, this was emotional. I, I bought into it. I sat here. I listened. Yay. Like that's, that's one, but two, you may actually remember it better because when you're inserting words like jargon into what's going on, they're not words I had a good definition of. We've all been in meetings where everybody's nodding and smiling, but we know damn well, nobody knows what, what we don't know what <laughs> words we're using. We're just using them uh, because we feel like we're supposed to. Um, you're not going to remember it the same way. Um, and it's something that whether it's strictly a story or something that we're developing, you know, within our larger system, we're always asking, you know, if you're building this, you know, three-year plan, is it communicated in a way that people can understand it? 
if you're mm -hmm. going to use this acronym or you're going to use this term, you know what it means, but will the new staff member know what it means um, and start to look at how you do that what order do you put things in? You know, how do you get your measurement, for example, you know, which is another type of impact storytelling. How do I tell you that we're making progress as a company? Um, how do you make sure that that's more about the story, not about the numbers, um, which is something that I, I find tends to happen. We're so excited with our jargon and our statistics to look really smart instead of saying, tell me the story about where we were how we got here and where we are, um, which is generally speaking a much better practice and we'll have people understanding, okay, I understood the point, I understand what's going on. And if you're really excellent, I understand where I fit um, in this overarching story and the numbers are actually there to support it. Um, so yeah. thinking about, you know, not just are they telling us the right things that is important, don't misunderstand, but how you present them, what order you look at them in, how you prioritize them, how you group them together. There's a story there um, that always needs to be brought to the top um, so that people really can understand. And again, think about that larger, you know, our favorite question is what's the point? Understand yeah. the point of why it's being looked at. I know um, I was, I guess it was a, a donation campaign. I forget exactly what it was for, but many years ago, someone was telling about the impact of this organization that was a non not-for-profit that were, and what they were doing and the way that they did it, instead of just saying we raised X number of dollars for cancer or whatever it was, they took one person's story and they explained like, you know, that they, it was like a little three minute video where they documented this one person's change that they impacted in that person's life. And they said, that's one person that was done through X number of dollars. We, we, we raised this many dollars to impact this many people. And he's kind yep. of like, whoa. So then it just, if they just would have told me like, oh, we did, you know, 40, we raised $4 million to, to help. 10,000 people. That means nothing to me. But when they share yes. that one story and I say, wow, that times 10,000 is, is, is impactful. That, that means something. Why we consider people serve stories, number one, uh, after your own story and understanding, you know, why you're here and, and how that fits together. Number one is always people serve stories because we need to get that. Um, and what you've keyed in on is after show, don't tell, be specific uh, is typically one of the other pieces of, of advice that I give, um, whether it's a numbers issue or a, you know, I'm just trying to talk issue. We have a tendency to say things like the customer. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know who that is, you know, mm -hmm. or our customers. It's like, give me a face to that. And preferably not the stupid avatar that marketing came up with. Go out, <laughs> find Bob, follow Bob's life. Help me to understand where Bob was what value and Bob needed, what Bob wanted to achieve and show me how we transformed Bob's life through what it is that we do. That's an excellent people serve story that gives me the tangibility and the specifics and the clear illustration of, okay, this is why what we're doing matters. And that's, that really helps with where the focus of your company is. And I think uh, one of the, the challenges that we have, you know, as we're looking at how work is evolving um, is making sure that that's the story we're telling first, you know, again, mm -hmm. if we just look at, well, we serve 10,000 people and we made, you know, 2 million more dollars, you know, that's I focused versus saying we're really here to do this and make this impact completely changes how you think about what you're doing. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and when, when I'm, when, and I try to take that approach and hopefully this will help some other tech leaders that are out there at the end of the year, you know, we have all these stats of things that we've accomplished, right? This many pushes of code, you know, lines of code written or, or pushes to production or bug fixes or number of users that have been added to the system or wh whatever the metric is. We have all these metrics and they, and yes, they mean something to the business, but they don't mean a whole lot, you know, on the individual level. I try to humanize that with a couple of like, you know, I have to report that, but what can I report that humanizes who we are and, and, and who our users are in a way, like I'll, I'll say, you know, I don't know, 15,000 uh, pushes to production uh, and I put equals, you know, 35 cups of coffee, you know, or something like that. Something yeah. that kind of humanizes the fact that a person had to have some caffeine in order to do all this work or, or you know, uh, something to that effect. And we, we put like little stats in there too about like, how many, um, you know, vac vacations we took. Cause that's cool. It's cool to have that time off and be in the, the company know that we appreciate that. And we're, we're, you know, reporting that because it's interesting. Um, 
Yeah. I don't know and where I I'm think, going with that story. <laughs> no, I, I hear where you're going, which for us is you're talking about the difference between an output and an outcome. Um, yeah, and I think good. we do need to know what the outputs are. We need to understand if we're being productive. We need to understand if we're hitting our milestones, you know, or chaos, you know, like we do, we do need to know these things. Um, but we always, uh, spend a lot of time in our team when we develop measurement framework and are really looking at what we call the, so what factors. So there's mm. one of my favorite questions is what's the point it's sister question that comes at the end is so what, if you had a point and you knew why you did this, so what did it mm-hmm. happen? You know, if you push this many new lines of code, what did, where did that get you? Um, and starting to be able to anchor that in what value was delivered where you can is even better um, because it brings back that in, oh, this is what's going on. So for example, you talk about, you know, vacations taken to me, that's a great opportunity for a team member story. Tell me what you did on your vacation. Why was it great to go? How did that improve you as a person? How did that embody the values that we have here as an organization? Um, That then starts to be like, oh, so what? We took this break because of this. Now we've got a little bit more meat on this that's going on. Or, you know, did we give people, you know, it's, it's that we gave people so many paid days off, but no one took them, you know, mm-hmm. like, Ooh, then, then the, so what factor was not achieved. We may need to look at another way to do this. And I know there are some companies that are like, sorry, like you have to take the days off. We're going to make you because we think it's that important. Um, there's another company, uh, which is a fabulous example who said, one of our values is that is family. You know, we want you to go home and spend time working with your family. We want to bend work around family, not family around work. Um, so they would actually penalize you if you clocked out too late in the day, um, because they really wanted to structurally embed that into what they're doing. But again, how wonderful that that turns into a story of here's how we're actually living our values, um, and getting us into that. So what factor, you know, because if I came in as a new hire and I said, why am I getting penalized? I'd want to know we're doing this because we want you home by six. And here's what some of our team members are doing with that evening time, because that gives me that. So what? Yeah, I think that's really good um, because it, it also encourages gratefulness, you know, gratitude within the company. And I think gratitude is an important thing that we don't really think about a lot at work. People are always looking for the next big thing and not grateful for, you know, what we have. And when, when you take that time to talk about where you use those benefits that were given to you, it kind of gives you the opportunity to have a little bit of gratitude. Yes. Um, and I think that's, a, you know, when you think about running a, a more focused organization, part of what you're doing is making people's roles a lot clearer. And that Mm -hmm. absolutely impacts story. Number two is team stories. And I like to say, if you've told a great team story somewhere in there needs to be a very big and very clear, thank you for what it is that you do. Um, because people want to feel valued, um, as much as we want to deliver value to the people that we serve. Um, so that's a big piece of that type of story, um, that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. What other types of stories are there? So the other two types, we've talked uh, a bit about people serve stories, uh, obviously, uh, mm-hmm. team team stories is number two. You then have uh, progress, which we talked a bit about via, you know, impact and numbers, you know, where are we on this journey? Where are we going? And that can yeah. be done with numbers. It can be done on a more regular basis of here's where we were last quarter. Here's what happened this quarter. Here's where we are now. Here's where we're going, um, which is an important um, continuity line. Um, if you think about humans and stories we always think about ourselves and our identity in, in relation to the historical context. We cannot understand ourselves today if we do not understand where we have been. And um, so it's, it's an important piece of what goes on internally as, as much as saying to people externally, hey, we, we delivered more things this year and this is the impact it made. The last piece of it is a piece that often gets uh, overlooked, which is um, education or knowledge, um, which can come in the form of a story, sometimes it comes in the form of a how-to guide, but in some cases, 
as weird as it sounds, that's as much a story as anything else, because it's giving you the steps of something to do um, mm-hmm. and is showing me pictures of what it's supposed to look like um, and everything else. If you're thinking about it more from a technology perspective, and I know how to help documents is a big piece of where knowledge is shared, but thinking more broadly, you can also um, share knowledge to the people that you serve. What is it that you are an expert about? How do you pass that knowledge on? Sort of goes back to the beginning of our our conversation. How do you pass that knowledge on? That's about them. That's about uh, one of the best phrases I was ever given is it's all about seeing their eyes light up when the idea lands, you know, Mm. it's not about how smart are you, or, you know, we hired this big firm and we published this awesome PDF report and look how many jargon words we use to be (laughs) super smart. Like who gives a flying fig? Um, Mm -hmm. Did you put it together a deck that broke down the concepts into things that I could understand? Did you build me a worksheet so that I could learn how to do it? Um, And that's as important to the people you serve, to your customers, as it is things that you can do internally um, to help your team really develop mastery over what's going on. Do you think about how you do what you do, how you build those processes and guidelines? Are they done in a way that has story examples so that I can really see how it all works um, so that it's easier for me to learn, do, and grow on your team? Mm, Yeah, that's really good. Um, well, thanks for all this information. It's been very helpful for me to uh, re-examine some of the different types of stories and how to tell them. How can people connect with you and learn more about Matter Logic and some of the things that you're working on and, um, and, and just grow as a storyteller? So the best way to get a hold of me is to come find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I do accept uh, pretty much every single request, uh, the connection request that is sent to me. Uh, and if you drop me a message, uh, I typically will give 15 minutes of time to anybody who reaches out to me. But if you say, Hey, I saw you on a, I'm a geek leader. I, I saw you on the show and I want to talk to you. I will book 45 minutes, uh, to make sure that you have plenty of time to ask questions, um, and go through whatever it is that you're thinking about working on. Um, and if there's something I can do to help you, I would be thrilled. Uh, the other place to check out, uh, is matterlogic.co. Uh, Uh, which gives our whole system, our whole logic online, helps you to understand where it came from, Um, absolutely gives resources for how you can go about applying it uh, at your organization. Um, So if there's there's something there you're looking at, please uh, go on, take a look, learn more. Um, And again, if you have any questions, please find me on LinkedIn. I would be happy to to help you uh, figure out how to find more focus uh, as a leader, as a company um, by shifting the story that you tell. Awesome. And I'll link that up in the show notes too at geekleader.com so people can find it there. And again, Katie, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. And I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, I did as well. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed that episode, please uh, leave a rating and review in Apple Podcasts. I'd greatly appreciate that. And also don't forget to check out merch. We have some t-shirts that uh, I've designed that are on at geekleader.com. You can click on the merchandise uh, section there and check that out. And also don't forget about the books from our guests. So if you like this guest and other guests that have written books, please um, go ahead and check that out at geekleader.com. I would greatly appreciate it, and I'm sure they would too.